this is uh, part three of, you know that um, President uh, George W. Bush was a con man, the same as President Ronald Reagan, and I was uh, reading you some of the quotes in the House of Representatives by Democrats who are criticizing H.R. 4297. That's uh, primarily a bill to uh, extend the uh, tax cuts of dividends to capital gains for two more years during two wars. And I think I have just one more quote for you. That is uh, Mr. Langdon. Mr. Speaker, today I rise in opposition to H.R. 4297 the Tax Reconciliation Conference Report, this gimmick-laden piece of legislation will require taxpayers to borrow another $70 billion so that the wealthiest Americans can keep their taxes low in 2009 and 2010. Now, uh, you can tell he's telling the truth here by what happened. despite these, these criticisms in the House. Uh, 229 Republicans out of 244 voted yes for this bill. 182 Democrats out of 184 voted no. In the Senate, 51 out of 54 Republicans voted yes for this bill. 40 out of 43 Democrats voted no. This shows Republicans, when in power in Congress, have cut taxes on the wealthy, regardless of wars, deficits, right or wrong. Now this is uh, the State of Union at his uh, State of Union address, Bush's, January 23. 2007. Bush said, first, we must balance the federal budget. We can do so without raising taxes. What we need is spending discipline in Washington, D.C. We set a goal of, co of cutting the deficit in half by 2009 and met that goal three years ahead of schedule. Now let us uh, take the next step. In the coming weeks, I will submit a budget that eliminates the federal deficit within the next five years. I ask you to make the same commitment. Together we can restrain the spending appetite of the federal government. We can balance the, the federal budget. Are you, ready? Are you here? Can we lift that up a little? Uh, a little bit more? Oh yes, a little bit right now. Uh, let's take a, a look at the, the deficits here. Now, Bush uh, made that statement in, in 2007. It was January. So he didn't know the, the deficit, the budget deficit for 2007, because it didn't occur yet. So he must be referring to the uh, budget in 2006, the budget deficit. Now, it was $248.2 billion. Now, can we go up just a little bit here? Uh, that's good. Uh, now, I don't know who they're referring to, because he wasn't specific, whether he was talking about the 204 or the 203 budget deficit here. But in 2004, the budget was $412.7 billion. Now, um, he did cut it 40%. If he's, That would be less if he's referring to the 2000, which would be about... Uh, 35%. But uh, here's the thing. This uh, uh, 206 budget that he's referring to right here is phony. Uh, in 2006, the national debt increased $574 billion. So what he's doing here to make 
make it look like these budget deficits have been reduced, he's not including all expenses in the budget. Now we're going to go up here. He says he's going to uh, gonna go up the other way. Uh, he's going to balance the budget here in the next five years. So let's go up five, five years. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. We can balance the budget here in five years. He's going to submit a budget to do that. Well, look at he's not even close. The budget uh, deficit for 2004 was 1.1 trillion. Bush is delusional. Let's go back down here again. Can we go? Up, can we go up a little bit? Okay, look at all these budget deficits here are phony. They total, they total two trillion for the eight years Bush was in office. However, the national debt more than doubled that amount during this period. That is fraud. More than half of government expense, more than half of government debt incurred during this period are not included in the budgets. Can we go up? Let's take a look at this chart. Oh, hold it. That's good. Okay, it says right here tax cuts are largest contributor to a reemergence of large budget deficits. Now wha what they're referring to here is the budget tax cuts because this is the period of 2001 to 2007. That's when Bush was in office. Now, by the way, the source of this chart here is the Congressional Budget Office. Now, this area here in red is 48% of the deficits attributed to the Bush tax cuts. 35% attributed to defense, homeland security, and the international. 10% entitlements, domestic uh, discretionary programs, 7%. Now this is uh, why Bush is to blame for this uh, reemergence of debt. Or, or maybe I should say uh, the main reason. He sent a letter to Northwest on June 8, 1999, saying, if elected president, I will oppose and veto any increase in individual or corporate marginal income tax rates or individual or corporate income tax hikes. Okay, this pledge puts him in good standing with the Republic Party and its rich donors. But it is unconstitutional and conflicts with the oath of office. It is also irrational. Here are things Bush funded but did not raise taxes to pay for. The Afghanistan war, which started in 2001. No Child Left Behind created the Department of Homeland Security in 2010. The Iraq War, which started in 2003. Medicare Part D. $85 billion for Katrina. These are new big government costs. And what Bush did, instead of raising taxes to pay for them, he cut taxes during two wars. These contributed to more than 83% of the reemergence of debt. Then, in 2008, Bush's false economy, based on government deficit spending and aiding the expansion of the housing price bubble, by refusing to crack down on subprime mortgage mills, churning out these ninja loans, which were bundled into bonds rated AAA and sold to unwary investors, exploded. President uh, Clinton handed George Bush a budget surplus of $123 billion. President uh, Bush handed President Obama 
a $1.4 trillion deficit and a recession, negative gross domestic product, and lower tax revenues. His utopian plan to cut taxes on the rich mostly to spur economic growth was a colossal failure. The same as Reagan. They used the same strategy, spend and not pay for. Okay, this is the State of the Union address, Bushes, January 28, 2008. Bush stated, his solution to the nation's woes, make the tax relief permanent. This chart shows what would happen if, Bush, if the Bush tax cuts were made permanent. Okay, now, <laughs> the Bush tax cuts were set to expire in 2010. If they were made permanent, this area that you see here in red is the national debt getting bigger and bigger every year as a percentage of GDP. If they were allowed to expire, you can see here a decrease in the national debt here would go down uh, as a percentage here of uh, GDP. But it still wouldn't balance the budget. Uh, you would need um, additional revenue or cuts in government spending uh, to balance the budget. Uh, this uh, statement by Bush here indicates insanity insisting what has not worked year after year, year should be made permanent part of the Internal Revenue Code. Now if it's made permanent, the national debt here is going to increase every year and get bigger indefinitely. This chart here is from 2000 to 2050. And it's by, the source is um, the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities calculations based on Congressional Budget Office data. Now, here is what else Bush said. And members of uh, Congress should know if any bill raises taxes, reaches my desk, I will veto it. This means he will honor his North request no tax increase pledge to the end. He will not raise taxes to pay for wars, homeland security, natural disasters, no child left behind, Medicare Part D to reduce deficits, or anything else the government needs. He will raise the debt ceiling, or he did raise the debt ceiling, 19 times instead. He also said, next week, I'll send you a budget that terminates or substantially reduces 151 wasteful or bloated programs, totaling more than 18 billion. This budget that I will submit will keep America on track for a surplus in 2012. Well, you know, that's not true. I, I just showed you the surplus. And in 2012, he made this statement in uh, 2008. It was 100. It was 1.8 trillion, 1.1 trillion. Okay. Um, here's uh, Bush's farewell address to the nation, January 15th, uh, 2009. Uh, Bush said. Every taxpayer pays lower income taxes. 